It is 9 a.m. local time in Port Hedland, Australia, and we are just hours away from the landfall of severe Cyclone Lua. This was a microwave satellite pass taken several hours ago, and you can tell the difference just based on the past 24 hours how much this storm has really come together. It now has a very well-defined eye, at least on the microwave satellite pass, and it's located well within that central dense overcast. The cyclone is now at Category 4 on the Australian scale, and the forecast track from the Bureau of Meteorology has not changed all that much. They are still anticipating a Category 4 landfall just to the east of Pardue. Meanwhile, the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is also forecasting a landfall just to the east of Pardue with a peak intensity of 95 knots. The eye of Cyclone Lua is beginning to enter Port Hedland's radar range. You can see it swirling about to the northeast. And this island out here is already recording sustained winds over 40 knots, and the inner core of the highest winds are still located well to the northeast of them. And even in Port Hedland, we are seeing gusts exceeding 40 knots, and those winds are only going to increase with every passing band. As we switch over to this morning's visible satellite animation, we still don't see a well-defined pinhole eye that you could otherwise possibly see in Category 4 and Category 5 cyclones. Nevertheless, as we turn to the enhanced infrared, we can still make out that well-defined eye within the central dense overcast, so there is little question that this is indeed a Category 4 cyclone. And I also have overlaid the JTWC forecast track, and the center of the storm appears to be following that track fairly well. If anything, it looks as though the center may pass ever so slightly to the west of their forecast landfall location, but the center is still going to cross near Pardue and just to the east of Port Hedland. It looks as though the eye of the cyclone is going to make landfall shortly after 2 or 3 p.m. local time. And this is being confirmed by the latest forecast output from the GFS and ECMWF models. And although the center is going to pass to the east of Port Henlon, you guys over there can still anticipate wind gusts exceeding well over 50 to 60 knots. So extreme Category 4 cyclone winds along with the threat of significant storm surge right along the coast, especially over and just to the east of the center, will be the primary concerns over the next 6 to 12 hours. And of course, the threat of heavy rainfall will persist with this cyclone as it continues to move toward the south-southeast. But look at here, on the latest GFS accumulated precipitation forecast for the next 6 days, Quite a lot of precipitation is also forecast near the Gulf of Carpentaria, and that extends eastward into the Cape York Peninsula of Queensland. Much of this expected activity is associated with that tropical low, and over the past few days there has been some question as to whether or not this low would successfully make it into the southeast portion of the Gulf. And today some of the models are now shifting the system back toward the north. The latest forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology does now have the system nearly stationary here across the open waters and if this forecast verifies then there will certainly be more than enough time for this system to achieve category one cyclone status. The JTWC has also followed suit by issuing a tropical cyclone formation alert for the area. Furthermore the latest radar animation out of Mornington Island is also confirming the presence of increasing low-level convergence and vorticity. Also, the standard infrared animation shows that this area of low pressure is coming together rather nicely here, especially within the past 12 hours. So this gives me good reason to believe that this will eventually go on to achieve cyclone status as the Bureau is forecasting. If it indeed does become a cyclone, it will attain the name Cyclone Mitchell. As we see on the latest water vapor, outflow is also increasing to the south and west of the area of low pressure. And so this appears to be a fairly healthy environment for steady intensification. The latest wind shear charts also confirm the presence of a rather strong ridge in the upper levels, and this is the reason why the wind shear values are relatively light, and this ridging should begin to expand a little bit to the north as the cyclone also moves into the open waters of the Gulf. The overall track forecast of this cyclone is going to be rather problematic, especially over the first few days, as it looks as though the steering currents will remain relatively weak. The following is the latest 12Z run of the ECMWF forecast model, and as we can see over the next five days, the storm is forecast to do nothing more than simply meander about the Gulf region, and we are going to have to monitor for any chances of this system remaining out over the open waters throughout the duration of this time. If that were to occur, then this system very well could achieve something greater than Category 1 cyclone intensity, but that is all speculation at this point. But the main 
threat associated with this low at the moment will be the risk of some torrential rainfall and high precipitation totals as the storm will be nearly stationary once again for several days. So that is all for now from us here at 28storms.com. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com cyclone for more updates.